Now, this first problem is pretty easy, and I know you agree with me, right? So, in this case, there are three capacitors of equal capacitance, which is given as 6 picofarad. And you have to find out the equivalent capacitance of this system. So, in this case, we can use the direct formula for finding out the equivalent capacitance of the series combination of these three capacitors, right? So, what do we have? We have 1 upon C equivalent to be equal to 1 upon 6 plus 1 upon 6 plus 1 upon 6. That is 3 upon 6, which gives us the value of the equivalent capacitance as 2. And don't forget the unit, picofarad. And this capacitance doesn't depend upon what voltage of battery has been applied, right? So capacitance doesn't depend upon the charge or the voltage. And in this case, we find out the equivalent capacitance to be equal to 2 picofarad and option D is the right option. Let's go to the second question of this DPP. So there are three capacitors whose values are given to you and these three capacitors are connected in series and this combination is connected to a battery of 110 volt. You simply have to find out what is the charge stored by the 12 microfarad capacitor. Now, when the capacitors are connected in series connection, then what remains the same? Charge or potential difference across them? Yes, the charge on the capacitors in the series combination is the same, right? So if you assume this terminal of the battery to be positive and this to be negative, and Q charge flows through the battery, then the charge distribution is going to look something like that. Yes? And always remember that when we talk about the charge stored by the capacitor, then we are not talking about the net charge because obviously the net charge is zero. We are talking about the charge on the positive plate, right? So first, let's find out what is going to be the equivalent capacitance of this system of capacitors connected in series by using this well-known formula, right? So what is 1 upon C equivalent? This is going to be 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 12 plus 1 upon 8, right? And we can simplify this. This comes out to be 11 divided by 24, which gives us the value of the equivalent capacitance as 24 divided by 11 and the unit microfarad. And now we can use the formula Q is equal to CV to find out the value of Q, which is going to be the charge stored on each of these three capacitors right? So what is Q? From here, Q comes out to be 24 divided by 11 into 110, which gives us the value of Q as 240 microcoulomb, right? As simple as that. So in this case, the charge stored by each capacitor is going to be 240 microcoulomb and option C in this case must be right. So in this case, two capacitors of capacitance C1 and C2 are connected in series like that. Now the potential at point A is given to you as V1 and the potential at point B is given to you as V2. You simply have to find out what is the potential at point D and choose the right option. So when the capacitors are connected in series, then the charge on them is equal, right? So let's assume that in this case, V1 is greater than V2, okay? You can also assume the opposite. And when you do that, you will get the same answer if you follow the right approach. So let me tell you how to do this and find out the potential at point D when you assume V1 to be greater than V2, all right? When that happens, let's assume that Q charge flows like that, right? So this plate of capacitor C1 will have charge Q. And the right plate will have charge minus Q, right? Similarly, the left plate of the, of the capacitor C2 will have charge Q and on its right plate, there'll be charge minus Q. This is the charge distribution in the steady state, right? Now, if you want to replace this series combination with a single capacitor, then the equivalent capacitance, C equivalent, is going to be how much? Well, we know this C equivalent is going to be 
C1 C2 divided by C1 plus C2, right? And we will have charge Q and minus Q like that. And the potential difference across this capacitor is going to be V1 minus V2, right? So first let's find out what is the value of Q. So from here, Q is going to be C equivalent into V1 minus V2. So this is C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2 into V1 minus V2, right? And now what we are going to do in this circuit, we are going to go from point A to point D. Now think about this. When you go from point A to point D, is there a potential rise or potential drop? Well, yes, in this case, there is going to be potential drop, right? Because the left plate of the capacitor C1, according to our charge distribution, is positively charged, right? So, what is the potential drop that is Va minus Vd? Va is V1. So, V1 minus Vd is going to be equal to Q divided by C1, right? And Q divided by C1 is simply C2 divided by C1 plus C2 into V1 minus V2, right? So let's put the value here. This is going to be C2 divided by C1 plus C2 into V1 minus V2. And simplifying this will give us the value of Vd. So how much is Vd? Vd is V1, C1 plus C2 minus C2 V1 minus V2 divided by C1 plus C2. And from here we will get the value of Vd as C1 V1 plus C2 V2 divided by C1 plus C2. And now I want you to try this out assuming that the potential at point B that is V2 is greater than V1. And you will find the potential at point D to be the C. Okay? So in this case, which option is right? Yes, option C in this case is going to be the right value of the potential at point D in this part of the circuit. Now this problem is pretty interesting. In this case, the two capacitors C1 and C2 are connected in series like this. And this combination is connected to a battery. Now, a graph is given to you. And that graph is the variation in potential as one moves from left to right on the branch containing the capacitors. By looking at this, you have to find out the relation between the capacitance C1 and C2 and then you have to choose the right option. So how shall we go about this? Well, one thing is very clear that in a series combination, the charge on the capacitors is going to be the same, right? So if you assume that charge Q flows in the circuit, then this plate will have charge Q, this plate minus Q, and Q minus Q, right? Now let's start from the leftmost point on the branch containing the capacitors. And let's say this point is O. Now according to the graph, the potential at this point is assumed to be zero, right? And on the graph, you can see that this point is here. Yes. So as you move from point O towards the capacitor C1, then the potential remains the same when you move along the conducting wire. And when you go across the capacitor C1, then this portion of the graph shows a potential rise. Yes. So let's assume that this point is V1. So there's a potential rise of V1 when you move across the capacitor C1 from left to right. Yes. And now again, when you go across the conducting wire, then the potential remains the same, which is indicated by this portion of the graph. And when you go across the capacitor C2, then again, there's a potential rise indicated by this portion. Let's give it some name. So let's assume that this point is V2. So as you go across the capacitor C2 from left to right, there's a potential rise of V2 minus V1, right? 
So this is V2 minus V1 and this is V1. Now clearly from the graph, the value of V1 is greater than the value V2 minus V1, right? So one thing is clear that V1, that is the potential across C1, the potential difference is greater than the potential difference across C2, that is V1, sorry, V2 minus V1, right? Yes. And now comes the interesting part. If the charge is same, then by the equation Q is equal to CV, we can have the idea on the relation between the capacitance. How? So V1 is greater than V2 minus V1. This means that the value of Q is C1. into V1 and the value of Q is also C2 into V2 minus V1, right? So what do we get C1 from here? C1 comes out to be Q divided by V1 and C2 comes out to be Q divided by V2 minus V1. Now focus on these two equations. Can you see that the numerator of both of them is the same, but the denominator of this equation is greater as compared to the denominator of this one from this simple relation that we already derived. Yes, this means that C1 is going to be lesser than C2 and there you go. So by looking at the potential difference in the graph and knowing that the that in the series combination of capacitors, the charge is going to be the same. We arrived at the relation between the capacitance. So from here, we can tell that C1 is going to be lesser than C2. And option C in this case is the right option. Now, according to this problem, you have been given with three capacitors of equal capacitance, three microfarad, and they need to be connected in a circuit. You have to find out what could be the maximum and minimum equivalent capacitance that you can obtain by using these three capacitors. Easy, right? So when do you obtain the maximum capacitance or when can you have the maximum effect by using these three capacitors? Well, obviously when they are connected in parallel, right? Then only they can store the maximum amount of charge thereby storing the maximum possible amount of electrostatic potential energy in them, right? And if you want the minimum equivalent capacitance, then you have to connect these three capacitors in series like that, right? So are you ready to find out the maximum and minimum equivalent capacitance that could be obtained? All right. So for the maximum equivalent capacitance, you just have to use the formula for finding out the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in parallel, which is nothing but C1 plus C2 plus C3. So in this case, we find that the maximum equivalent capacitance, capacitance that could be obtained by using these three capacitors is going to be 3 plus 3 plus 3, that is 9 microfarad, right? And now let's find out what could be the minimum equivalent capacitance? So this is going to be 1 upon C equivalent is equal to 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 3. That is 3 upon 3, which gives us the value of C equivalent minimum as 1 microfarad. As simple as that. Right? So remember this. This is the opposite of what we obtain in the case of resistance. Right? In the case of resistors, when you have the resistors connected in series, then they have the maximum effect. And when they are connected in parallel, then they have the minimum effect. In the case of capacitors, it is just opposite of the case of resistors. In this case, if you connect the capacitors in parallel, then you get the maximum effect out of them. And when you connect them in series, then you, then you obtain the minimum effect. So in this case, option A is going to be the right option.